Hi there, good morning. It's Saturday, it's the 3rd of June. No, not June, it's July 2021. And Saturday, so it's Saturday sketchbook, isn't it? I like alliteration. So did the Anglo-Saxons. They used alliteration as their form of rhyming. Interesting fact, possibly. And yes, one day I want to learn to speak Anglo-Saxon, or at least some Anglo-Saxon, if nothing else. I think I'd like to read Beowulf in Anglo-Saxon and understand it, but that's just one of those things with me. First step, learning Welsh. And it's slow, but I'm learning stuff. But anyway, I witter on. So I think this is more or less one of the last sketchbook pages you saw. And it's where I'd used some biro ballpoint pens to draw some shapes and forms and different things and tried adding colour over the top of the colour. Really enjoyed it. Um, this must be about a week ago. Actually, it would have been a week ago. I'm just experimenting with different things. So that's what sketchbooks are for, as well as for me to finish works. This is the last um, drawing I did, I think. And um, it is there. No, it's not the last drawing. The last drawing I did on a different sheet of paper. Um, gel pens, Arteza. I haven't finished drawing it yet. But again, it's sketchbook, so it, it's not important whether I do or not in some ways. I'm not sure whether it will end at the finish, but what you might notice is I have added details and some shading and things to it. Because I do want to try adding colour over that with traditional media. This over here, because I'd enjoyed using coloured ballpoint pens for drawing back here. Excuse me, flicking pages, but you know, it is what it is here this morning. These were... Bic biros, but the coloured by Bic ones are broad, and I'm not so keen on broad tips, but they were interesting. These are a selection of biros I found around the house, so purple and pink and so on, and greens and other and blues and so on, and just wanted to try. And as others have arrived, I've tried some of those out as well, just to see what would happen. Having said that, this and this area down here and this and these, I created some colours with ink tents on over here, with ink tents, um, paints actually, rather than the pencils. And just to see what I could do on the top of it, because it's all trying things out and seeing how things work. The coloured biros layer up really interestingly. You have to be you have to have quite a light hand with them, which is good practice for me. It is good practice. And it's quite interesting how you can get different shades and tones. It's like this up here looks sort of purplish, you know, from a distance. But close up you can see there's blue and red in it. And the same with these colours. There's blues and greens and blacks in, in these feathery things and so on. And just seeing what I could do. I mean no idea what I was going to draw. And then I thought, OK, then let's draw in black and add some colour, which is what I did up here. Just some doodling one night when I was trying to sleep or get to sleep and I wasn't ready. Um, this I drew yesterday with, I think I used a Tombow Fudanisuki for the black lines. And then I started adding colour with ballpoint pen. And again, it's strokes going in the direction you want and layering them over a little at a time. I was a bit heavy handed because I was tired. And what you most probably can't see here too easily, and perhaps you can. This morning I've been drawing and sketching. I've taken some time with music on. Um, I've been using reference photos and, and so on to um, just look at shapes and forms of different things like fungi. Um, I've got some fungi here, I've got a beetle, and I've got some shells as well, some um, limpets, different kinds of limpets. These are going to be interesting because the, these thick, these darker radiating lines, or heavier, wider radiating lines, are bright blue against the sort of like very, um, you know, some colours of brown, so they could be really interesting. But I've drawn them in pencil because I first want to add some colour with ink tents and then go back and add shading over the top. That's my plan anyway. Or perhaps I'll do that in some, but we'll see. It may be that's what I do in some cases, and in others I'm going to start with um, some shading of pens. I have bought a stupid number of 
um, different biros. And this one, I was looking on um, a shop called Cult Pens over here. And it's an Oto ballpoint pen horizon and it's a needlepoint ballpoint pen. But it's so cute. And it comes in two colours, this or pink. So I went for the blue. And um, not that I don't like pink, but the pink was a bit insipid. Whereas this blue is quite a nice one. And it only has black in the um for the refills no other colors so but i thought it'd be lovely as a, a pen to carry in a notebook or a journal or um things like that because i've got other plans as well so if i start here they do take a little while to get going sometimes but so gently just to add little shading and then yeah I, I went for some Bics and these are the Bic fine just classic crystals cheap as chips cheerful as anything and they only come in four colours sadly but they do you know by layering you can mix the colours and by using the really light hand which I'm not being very good at this morning still haven't come round properly today you can get different do some here different depth and shadow and leaving white for the for the plain background colour. This my thinking is that it's something a bit different for me to try and use because although I no, I need to turn. Excuse me, I am going to open my sketchbook so I can turn it. So sorry. Ugh. There we are. And no, I won't be editing that out. So I'm making no apologies for not editing anything today. My my brain just. It doesn't want to work this morning. But I thought they could be a nice way to carry simple tools with me. Possibly even light weight tools. With a little field sketchbook, notebook, writing book. Just as a way to um record things in a different manner i suppose it just shows that you know in some ways you don't really need expensive art materials to create art despite the pressures there can be from well-known influencers and artists and so on um, and various creative communities it depends what you're going to do with it with the art I suppose as well though I have seen some absolutely amazing portraits done with just ballpoint pens nothing else when it is having that very light touch and using texture and building up things. So you can see it actually works really nicely. Now I thought I'd do perhaps try here some shading on some of these and see how I get on. If you use lines to shade you really need to do it in a direction that's sympathetic with what you're drawing so I think it's the theory not that I oddly I just don't know much about theory of art and drawing but you can use the direction and the shape of the lines to help build that sense of um, shadow and depth and, and volume and form but it, it's does take 
fair amount of practice and that very light hand to do as well. And of course using different colours means that you can build shadow up in a different way. Shadow isn't just black, not when you're looking at colours. It can be picked up from surrounding objects. I'm not sure what the technical terms are for such things. And while I know that having a, a theoretical knowledge or understanding of how things like light works can help people, for me it's still about observation. But also, I did come across um, a video by someone, I can't remember his name, where he talks about there's two basic ways, if I, if I remember I'll put the link in the description, if you want to know and I haven't put the link there please let me know. But two different ways to add shadow, one is to consider a light source and work with a light source, the other way is to use, I think he calls it ambient, ambient something AO, where you just look logically at things and see where they overlap. And where they overlap, you'd get a shadow. And, you know, how much shadow you get or how dark it will be depends on how, you know, various other things. But you work in that way without reference to a light source and it creates volume and shadow because your brain works it out in its way. It's, you know, and I'm thinking, heck, that's what I tend to do. <laughs> Without realising there is a technical term for this, it's something that I, I do. And um, so that was really interesting to watch, to listen to and to see. And no doubt I will revisit it. And it, is, it was designed for, or the video was made for people who um, essentially create um, graphics for video games and, and so on, and manga and what have you, but um, it was interesting from my point of view because I've said it often enough, I'm not really a realist artist, I don't go for realism particularly, although it does creep out from time to time, no doubt. Um, say that you know but I tend to simplify and stylize things and focus on the main elements so I, I guess I'm more of a an illustrator in some ways than I am I don't know if I'm a fine artist and illustrator um, there's elements I suppose of scientific illustration or there's a whole mix of different influences in me that I think comes out in my kind of work and um, okay, how did these work? I've got to remember this. I should have written notes, but I didn't because I'm a bit of a muppet at times. And I am going to start with quite dark shadows there. What I'm going to do is These also dry, so excuse me, in my arm. And they can take a little while to get the bit of dried ink off and flowing. So because this is a sketchbook, it's meant to try things out in, not necessarily to have perfect finished pieces of work um, and things that you can refer to, reference to. For me it would be a place usually, or has been in the past, not so much these days, but something I do need to um, start doing again, keeping notes and commentary on what I used, what I liked, what I don't like. Um, reminders, Angela, do not try to do this again. 
you know, if you think back, if you saw some early videos of my bugs and the disaster I had with what I thought was a clear glaze pen and it was white. Yeah. Reminded yourself not to do these things. So what I'm doing is not going to do all of them. In, um, with ballpoint these shadows, but just to get some to give me that that idea that you know an idea a sense of what's going on here. Um, more than anything, is what I want to do. I think. And I'm also trying not to draw a line in. The pencil, the pencil line is there. But it's just about adding that bit of shadow. Okie dokes, where are we off to now? Okay, let me go over to this one here because these were really quite interesting. The gills and the underneath of the um, mushroom cap. These are interesting mushrooms because they start off closed and then this bit opens out up around itself. So the gills are underneath here, but they become on the outside as, as it grows. And these this spotty pattern ends up inside. Really interesting. I love I love nature. I do have to say that and um, it fascinates me all of these things that we have. You can see here that I'm just adding some darker mess there. Now I'm no expert with pens like this but just want to see what will happen because you know it's what I do experiment and work out what works and what doesn't really and although it may not work out it may give me ideas for other things so these I really do want to put quite a date uh, I do want to put quite a line in here because they really are prominent I think they're blue veined limpets blue striped limpets something like that but it's really striking blue line on them but who knows I may not do that blue line I may choose a different color because I'm not illustrating these things, I've just been using them for practice with something like this really. And I think shells and so on. Um, my walk the other day with my friend Liz on the beach, I did mean to collect shells to bring home, did I? Did I? Heck. Um, foot hurting, you know, um, getting tired as well. We both work as neither of us have been all that active over the past year. And um, it does take its its toll, I suppose. Like everything, okie dokes, let's have a look. Now I've got my ink tense pencils rather than the paints because um, I like ink tense pencils. So if you hear me um, rattling around, it's because I'm just looking for pencils to use. And rather than use a pot of water and a paintbrush today, I'm just going to try using a water brush. Because again, 
in a small art kit could compose a couple of ink tense pencils, a couple of ballpoint pens, and a, a water brush. This one, these ones are this one's a Canon Dash. And I found these a bit better for me to control the water. Now the correct uh, I say the correct way, one way to deal with ink tents is to start light and go to dark, but here I just want to pick up some of the colour so I can spread it a bit. And because this is sketchbook paper, it is a bit on the grabby side. So let's have a look. But it, you know, it'll work because thinking ahead, I should really put the other colour on the other side because I'm now going to have to let. Well, I think I'm going to have to let it dry, not necessarily. Let's see, I've got this one and ink tents, pencils, like all watercolour pencils, you can use them to colour with, draw with, add water on directly on the paper or you can pick the colour up off the um, tip. The problem here is that it can go down just that little bit too intense to begin with, but actually having the paper water laden does help. Um, and I did want to Ready orange there for the middle. Orangey red. I might do. Well, perhaps not hot red, but it will give that change of colour, I suppose. Not to blend them one into another. So here we are, that being note myself. Should I ever add any notes to this? Hopefully I will. Um, it's a start though, and that Shiraz was Shiraz. The other one was hot red, and the Orange I used was cadmium orange, just in case you were interested. Not necessarily the exact colours that this particular mushroom would be. I think it's one of the no, it's not a belize. So there's that one. These ones were really interesting because the sensor was a really, really rich orangey yellow. So I want orange that one, and I'm looking for yeah, I want golden yellow. So let me have a look here because I want to get some yellow in. And if I remember rightly, the outside was sort of like an a grey olivey green. So, um, so this again is the first one was golden yellow. This one is cadmium orange. will give that more brighter orange. Then I've, I've picked up tangerine but I think I'm, I'm going to need something a bit darker than tangerine for here. Possibly. There's a hint of red so I'm going to be flirting around a moment to look for a red or a red brown. Red oxide could be pretty good. Actually vermilion would work. Mid vermilion because it's um, it's a pinky, pinky red, pinky orangey red, I think. Start with the golden yellow and work outwards from there. So the colours mix. I'm finding these Caran d'Ache water pens, which I found in my pot of intense pencils, I think it was, when I picked them up. Um, a few days ago again. Goodness knows where they come from. But they were there and I thought... Oh. And they... Sometimes they seem to work really well for me and other times they don't. What I do like is that I'm able to control the water flow just that bit more easily than perhaps with... Um, other kinds of water brushes like... Um, the Kuritake Zig ones are okay, but the Pentel Aquash I find an absolute nightmare for me. I really do. It just never ever seems to work. They, the, well, I say that they do work, but sometimes it you do the same thing and the water just floods out, and I don't want flooding water. 
what I do want is, you know, a, a barely damp brush. And then I'm not entirely, you know, it's, it is about control, but they, they work in a different way. They have a piston system to fill and to, um, to fill with water and, um, they seem to the button that you press, the area that you press to release water into the, the brush, seems to be um, a bit stiffer, less flexible perhaps than others. I mean, you, you can press it hard and get a lot of water flooding down, but I'm not one for a lot of water. It's for me, it's that. Uh, I've said this before. Any any watercolor attempts, it's more to do with me wanting to. Um, have a have a sense of control over. I'm looking for olive. Oh, that's leaf green. That's not the one I want. Oh, that's leaf green again. Fern. Um, Fern might do it. Let me have a look. Pick a little bit up. Try it up. Yeah. Uh, no, it's not green enough. White green, I don't think will be right. No, it's not, not the right green. It was apple green. There was a spring green. I think the spring green is, yeah, it's too green. Yeah, the two aren't green enough, and that one's too green. That's why I'm looking for olive here. Get the wasted olive. I know there's an olive. There's an oak there that looks green. Well, I may just have to make do with one that's close enough. I'll try leaf green. This might do. Oops, two. Okay, let's go with. Oh, I've got light olive. There we go. Completely different colour than what I expected. Still not quite right, but it will. I think it will work for me for now. In terms of a darker colour, where there's shadow here. Let me have a look. Apple green. Mm. I'll go with that spring green, I think. Just to lighten, to add some greener tones to this and see what happens. Because I'm no expert with any of this. My ability to use colours is very limited. Uh, mixed me traditional media vexes me. Especially when it comes to mixing colours or working with the colours you've got. To start it will do. And actually on where my camera is looking at this I can see that it actually looks better on there although this looks like it's curving out rather than curving in. I've got the shapes of things wrong but that's fine it's just trying out trying things out isn't it this is very pale in comparison and that's the difference uh, so let me have a look got my sheer as so put some more on top it's still dampish here um i'll put some I've got the tangerine there so i think that'll be a better mix for this now i may be ruining what I've done here with this because um that be that red was the vermilion not vermilion because the paper's still a little damp and ink tense reacts with dampness so I'm hoping that it's damp enough that these won't become permanent too soon put it that way let's have a look they're gonna be fine I think It certainly has intensified the colours, so that's good. 
what I wanted. And just bring that over. Now I'm not going to be able to add any more colour to this because uh, I've oversaturated that and I've made a bit of a mess of the paper. We're doing for time. Because I, I am conscious that I can talk for Britain and that um, not everybody would want to listen to me gibber and jabber, jabber on but I can do but then perhaps you do and you've also got the option to speed the video up turn me off and listen to music or something else at the same time and I'm not going to be offended because unless you tell me I won't know or skip through the video to different parts and again, I won't mind because we all do it. I I tend to like videos that are um, quite documentary based. In some ways, when I, if I'm working, sometimes I like to listen to stories as such, or you know, something that's interesting that I don't have to look at, so that it's my brain works on, you know, it keeps my thinking brain occupied while my creative brain is being busy as well. It doesn't take away my attention from the art I'm doing. Righty ho, talk about mess ups here. Oh, yeah, I'm having them. I keep saying this about me in traditional media. We um, kind of work, but it is a love hate relationship for sure. And uh, it matters no matter, no, it matters not how often or what tutorials I watch and listen to or advice people give me, I try it and it just never seems to work out for me. Now this is dark aquamarine which is not the colour that these these are because they are really really, well I don't know, it might it actually would do. Actually that would be quite nice. This is being a bit of a pain now. Get a bit more water flowing, just a bit more. nice thing about using the Inktense pencils for this is that, Inktense in, in general, is that once these colours are down they're not going to move so if I choose to switch now to watercolours say for the um, other colours, other areas on these then these colours will remain there so they won't mix with watercolour so as these would be sort of like creamy browns and slightly darker brown behind. And you could get some mucky colours. These will remain pure. Um, which is quite fun. That actually worked out quite nicely. Um, were others, what did I want to do as well? Yeah, I wanted to try out things when... Let's try the, these here. Crimson. Crimson is so lovely. So it gives everything a chance to dry here. Let's just add some crimson here and see how that goes over. The ballpoint pen ink. Obviously I've tried this before, so I know it's going to work, but it is just seeing how how it works with a relatively large amount of ballpoint pen ink. And of course, ballpoint pen ink is oil-based and it's waterproof. So maybe not what most people will consider using in water-based media, but you know, got to give it a go and see what happens. Oh, why am I doing that? 
because I'm, I'm a Muppet. And these tips of these petals are just blue. So I'm going to add some this year and just see how that works. Perfectly fine, I think. Let's pick some of the um, ink tents up browns there to give that little highlight. That works quite nicely actually. Okay, dokes, so let's go fertling just for a moment. Sicilian yellow. Colours looking weird today. Let's try. This is tan. actually works quite nicely. Nice to get things like the colours to go in the right, you know, to create that pattern of striping. Here there was some mixing of the blue, or perhaps the blue was overspilled anyway. But, um, so you're sharpening this, but I won't subject you to the sound of my, my sharpener. It will do as it is for now. It will. Yep, so um on to other things while I'm doing this because I will whitter about what I'm doing if I'm not careful and we'll get lost with it. Is I um managed to get all of the remaining templates for um whimsical kit whimsical caps in the coloring book I've been working on sketched out so I'm now awaiting approval from the editorial team or comments and criticisms before I ink them in. I haven't inked in any more of the ones that are approved and I'm not going to be doing that today I'm having a um, a day away from it all so I'm going to do these and then I'm going to consider what I may do for the rest of the day it has been raining here overnight and quite heavy at times, I think. And it's still grey and damp, but it's lovely and fresh. And I, my feet are getting a bit um, itchy to go out. So my only problem is that they may be itchy for me to go out. But I... Um, The foot I hurt when I fell last Saturday, a week ago, it's been hurt again, I think, or um, undone, undone some of the healing that had happened with my walk on Thursday along the sand, because my foot is swollen, so, and it's a bit sore and stiff again. So if I do go out, it won't be for a long walk. And it won't be a difficult walk, so no hills or wobbly paths or sand. But it may be that I can um, get myself um, somewhere where I can sit, draw, perhaps even write. Because I have a, a desire to write as well. Not just draw, but I, I feel there's a need for me to express my feelings, my things that are going on inside my head that I'm not necessarily aware of um, and to get these out in a more creative and personal style. So really truly an art journal in the sense of drawing and writing together. 
um, not necessarily in the mixed media sense of art journaling or creating a, a journal for others to use, I suppose. Um, so it's sort of like a sketchbook with notes, really. And that would be of interest to me. But um, the emails I write to my editor, um, because we check in on each other and, you know, catch up on stuff. Then um, there are times when, you know, um, she lives in America, I live in Wales and Great Britain, United Kingdom, and um, our environments and the things that are around us and seasons and changes and so on of interest to us both. And it's always nice to be able to share my journeys. And um, apparently, she says, I paint very good pictures with my words. And it makes her really want to visit. And apparently I should have been a travel writer or could be a travel writer. I'm not so sure about that because, um, you know, it would be a very unusual kind of travel. But then I guess with drawing, painting and other things as well, it could work out really quite nice. Oh, well, so we shall see what happens. Um, I don't know for sure. Um, I have got a pan for that blue. If it's if it doesn't become bright enough, I'm going to fertile through all the gel pens I've got and see if I can find a blue that would lift it or make it brighter. In fact, I do have some here. Look. I've got this one. I've got some, um, that's a souffle, I think. Yeah, it's a souffle, so I, I don't particularly want that. But let me try. Because the worst thing that happens, say this to everybody, the worst thing is happens, you discover that something you thought might work doesn't. And that's fine. It's a sketchbook, it's for trying things out. Now that is too bright, or too dark a blue. That's the Uniball Signo. And they are the Signo Super Pastel pens. Perhaps it dries a bit more pastel. Ooh. I haven't used this souffle, so that's going to be interesting. So let me see about this. Ooh, now that, if that is the blue, that is the blue I wanted. And I know with souffles, they do dry opaque. But I also know from experimenting that while they're wet, I can use a paintbrush just to spread them out that little bit. And once they dry, you can go over the top of them again if you wish. So like here, it'd be really useful where I've gone over the blue with um, inadvertently with the browns. The only way to find it out is to see what happens. And again, this was a little trick, or this kind of thing was something I picked up on um, part of the domestic course I've done on botanical sketchbook um, drawing, sketchbook drawing and things. Um, by what's his name, um, La Pan. I signed up for um, so the number of courses I've got that I haven't done, but when they have a special offer on, it's best to get it then because you never know whether the special offer will come back. So this morning I bought three a pack of three creative writing courses, and um, I'd seen one a number of times advertised and thought I really think I need to do this. Talking about writing now, and um, I just thought it would be a really really perhaps good thing for me to I am fiddling around in a, in a pen that would be good um, to actually have some courses find out a bit more about it jog my memory on things to do with creative writing perhaps and see what happens um, and I'm putting orange on there, and that's going to dry paler, possibly. We'll see. But what I might do as well is just put a couple on there and just see what happens. 
so um yeah so um to see what happens so that's that's something i might do today as well so i've been talking and working for about 45 minutes here i did an hour or so before that so i've had a good session of art this morning just art for art's sake i'm not quite sure what i'm going to do perhaps i'll come back tomorrow and talk my way through what i've done or carry on with this i don't know it depends on energy levels today and focus but certainly working with ballpoint pens this has given me a really intense shadow and it really does look like things are overlapping and needs to be some highlight so while i'm at it ugh, let me get oh gosh these pens i haven't put them back properly so they've spilled everywhere now um one of the white signos or a white signo pen just introduce some highlights just to help and yet I am dotting it along I'm not drawing it along because I prefer a f um, some of the colour underneath to show through so they visually mix now hopefully that will work that's dried Those orange ones are really a bad move, but maybe, but hopefully. So I wanted like little holes here. Now the 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 um the pen pencil has become moved by the the brushing here, but. pen remains so it's interesting to me at the moment I'm not sure what it means for me going forward but we shall see and here I just want to add in some light here to give the impression that these bits are catching light whereas the top areas are, are darker in shadow and see if that will bring out a bit more texture and so on of course, even though I'm using traditional media, the lessons I learn here can still be applied to my digital artwork because playing with light and darkness, shadow and different effects of getting those highlights and so on is of interest to me. And while I'm at it, let's just go along. Here. And add some highlights in there. And um, here in shadow, this side would be high lit, so perhaps that will help. I'm not sure if it's showing up there because these are dry, uh, haven't dried. But um, white there is almost vanished, so it may be that I'm going to have to use a jelly roll or similar. But you know, it's a nice way to spend a Saturday, I think. Sketchbooks and pens. And um, I will write some notes on here um, later, perhaps. And I've got other things that I need to put in my sketchbook, like those bugs that I messed up and make notes there. And um, little ideas that I perhaps I ought to get, just find that clear glaze pen and try using that. But, um, yeah. So there we are. So I'll just make it clear at the end that I'm not paid, sponsored or gifted any products in whatever way. All my opinions are my own. I mention things out of interest because you may find it interesting. You may want to look at, for example, some of the domestica courses I'm taking. Because even though I, you know, I've been doing art for 20 years, most probably all my life one way, in one form or another, there's always things to learn and different ideas that you get from other people. And sometimes they make sense, sometimes they don't. But I really do feel that need to use words and I I was experimenting with typographic portraits last a year ago now and I haven't really gone anywhere because people are interesting but portraits, I don't know. 
but being able to do a background of words perhaps behind an object with words that are about it or about an experience of a time or place um so for example if i was out walking and i saw a mushroom like this and i took a photograph or i sat and drew more likely to take a photograph but um and then come back and use that for reference it to record my feelings my thoughts the experience of being in that time and space and it would change depending on the seasons and the weather on the time of day um, the quality of light that you have my own mood and emotions would influence my experience and to be able to record that intrigues me as well because it's not something I do and it's not something I'm often consciously aware of so bringing those those thoughts and emotions out are of interest um, obviously you know things crop up as I talk here and I suddenly become aware of things I'm trying to remember to make a note of them afterwards because I don't know whether I could sit through my own videos there we are there's an admission because I've said it all and I've seen myself do it but it could be interesting you know I know I know if I need to go back I know which videos to look at for those ideas but anyway I hope you've enjoyed this my ramblings my artistic commentary on my work and other bits and bobs and um, if you have consider thumbs upping it and subscribing to the channel I still do art nearly every day though I think I'm going to look at that and see if I do you know two or three times a week perhaps and occasionally others because not because it's taking me away from other stuff but because I think I need time to think about things perhaps and to try things out and we'll see but anyway take care of yourself enjoy your weekend and um, hopefully I'll see you very soon bye bye now